Let's create some YouTube ads to drive more leads and sales to your business. Timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a link to our YouTube ads playbook that has the latest campaign recommendations for leads and sales and campaigns for growing subscribers, as well as this simple formula so you know what on earth to say in your ads. So if you don't already have an ads account set up, just head over to ads.google.com. You can set one up for free. You'll, as soon as you start their onboarding process, you're going to look for something that says switch to expert mode or marketer mode at the bottom. And then you'll be able to jump in and actually have full control of your account. So we'll dive into my screen here. I'm inside of one of our Google ads accounts. The first thing of course we need to do if you haven't already set up your YouTube channel is come over here to tools and settings and then come over here to linked accounts and you'll see a bunch of options here. And what we're going to choose is going to be YouTube. And as you can see here, I have a couple linked already. So I'll go ahead and click on manage and linked. And all you need to do is click this blue plus button and you can add your channel. There's no limit to the number of channels or ad accounts you can connect. So don't feel like you get locked into anything. So I'll jump over to our dashboard and then we'll go ahead and create our new campaign. So I'll go ahead and start by clicking the blue plus button, new campaign. Now the selection you make here actually does make a difference in your campaign setup. We'll go ahead and select without goals or guidance, but if you already have traffic and conversion data, then using something like sales or leads might actually be more helpful. So we'll go ahead and click without goals or guidance because I'm going to assume that we're just getting started for the first time here. And then of course, we'll jump down to video. Check out the channel for really detailed tutorials on search, display, discovery. So we'll go ahead and go to video. We'll go ahead and leave these alone and we'll go ahead and click on continue. We'll start by giving our campaign a name here. So I'm just going to give this an overly complicated name, essentially letting me know that this is a YouTube video. It's targeting prospects. We're going to be using something called custom intent. And then the type of videos or the type of ads we'll be running will be YouTube and stream. And of course, this is a demo. So we'll come to bid strategy. You can go ahead and leave it at cost per view. So we're going to pay every time someone views our video. And then scrolling down here, we'll come to campaign uh, budget and we'll go to daily. And I'm gonna go ahead and do 250. You can go all the way up to $5 a day and it will just depend upon your niche or industry and of course the actual countries that you're targeting. So for our start and end date, I always record these a little ahead of time, but we'll go ahead and start this on a Monday and then we'll set it to end two weeks later. So that way, just in case I forget, Google doesn't keep spending our money. So when we come down to networks, this is going to be important. You want to uncheck video partners on display network because we only want our ads to show up on YouTube itself. And so we'll come down here. If you want to go ahead and switch out the locations that you're targeting, Google's trying to be smart and is targeting the countries we normally target. But all you need to do is click on advanced search here and then add locations in bulk. And you can just type in the countries, territories, or states, zip codes that you want to target. Now, the advantage of being detailed here is when you actually go to look at your campaign data, you'll be able to see a breakdown by the targeted locations you have in here. So as an example, if we wanted to target just the United States, I would actually want to put all 50 states in here so I could see how our campaign was performing on a state by state basis. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the countries that we generally get sales from. Languages we can go ahead and leave alone. Now this is a relatively new thing, content exclusions define where your ads can be shown. They've now moved this over to tools and settings. So if I come up here to tools and settings, you'll see here that there's now this new thing called content suitability. So we'll go through that at the end, but essentially it's how you tell Google what type of content you're willing to show up next to. And it's not really something you would need to worry about. We'll just set it a default one time. So for additional settings, we need to come down to devices, specific targeting devices. And because we want to drive traffic off of YouTube, we need to uncheck TV screens because ads that show up on TV screens, it's pretty hard for people to actually click over to your site. And if someone's on the couch watching TV using their YouTube app, they're probably not in the best position to actually take some action, right? So we'll go ahead and leave that alone. Ad schedule and frequency capping. Ad schedule only if phone calls are part of your sales process. Frequency capping, you can always come back later and change this if you find that your ads are showing up too much to people. But we're only spending 255 bucks a day, so it's probably not gonna happen. So at this point, we've actually created our campaign. 
So we jump over to our diagram here. At the very top, what we've just done is set up our campaign, our locations, our budget, where we're going to allow our ads to run. And so now what we're doing is we're coming down to the second level, our ad groups, and this is going to be where we tell Google who are actually going to see our ads. So jumping back into our interface here, I'm actually going to skip ad creation and ad group creation. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip, and I'm just going to create the campaign and then we'll set up our ad groups. So we'll go ahead and continue to campaign. And now that our campaign is set up, it's an empty shell, we can go ahead and set up our ad group. So I'll go ahead and click on the plus button here. I'll rename our ad group custom intent. And this is going to be landing pages. And then we can come down here to audience segments. Now this graphic shows all of the different targeting options that you have. There are a lot you can test, but what we found from our own experiments, starting with custom intent, tends to get us the best return for our ad spend. Of course, you should always be testing all of these other ones as well. We're just suggesting this is where you start. So jumping back into the interface here, we're going to select audience segments. We're under browse, and then we're going to come under to custom segments. You'll see we have a couple here that we use and just from other YouTube tutorials like this one. And we'll go ahead and click on custom segment. So I'm going to go ahead and target a bunch of landing page softwares. But when it comes to how to set this up, you can make a list of keywords that your ideal customers would be typing into Google, just doing searches, trying to learn things. You can make a list of software and services that they might be using. And then we could also make a list of influencers. So in this particular instance, we're going to be targeting people who are trying to run Facebook or Google or YouTube ads. And so we'll make a list of Facebook ad keywords. We'll make a list of software that they might be using. Let's say landing pages because you should have a landing page if you're driving traffic. And then let's say we have a list of Facebook ads influencers. And so we would create custom intent audiences with each one of these lists to see which one works the best. So in this particular instance, I'm going to go landing page software and I'm going to call this intent. I'll go ahead and drop in the names of those landing page softwares. You can see we have five to 10 million weekly impressions. So this is a giant audience, right? And then of course you can also come down here. This is something that I've seen some other advertisers do and it's pretty ninja is you could go ahead and actually put in the URLs of these particular sites. And then you can also put in the URLs of the login of these services. So you make sure that you're actually targeting those people who are actually logging in to the sites. So you know that these people actually not only are interested, but they're actually actively losing, using, not losing, they're actively using this software. So shout out to that other YouTube channel that came up with that. I thought that was pretty ninja and it's worked out pretty well. So we'll go ahead and have this 5.2 landing page software intent. And you'll see why I call it intent. We'll leave it at intentions here and then we'll go ahead and click on save. And so now we're targeting this particular group of sites and applications. That's all we need to do here. And we can go ahead and skip ad creation for now. So we'll go ahead and click on skip. Our bid, we'll go ahead and set it to 10 cents here. We're going to be running something called YouTube in-stream ads. We'll get to that a little later. I'll go ahead and save ad group. We're going to select skippable in-stream. You can't undo this, right? So we wanna make sure we select skippable in-stream and we'll go ahead and save the format. Then we're going to create one more ad group here. So we'll go ahead and click the blue plus button again. We'll go ahead and name this ad group custom terms landing pages. You'll see why in a moment. We'll come down here to audience segments. We should actually say landing page software, be a little more specific. And then under browse, we'll come down to custom segments again. We'll create a new one. I'll name this landing software terms. And now I'm going to check this box and then go ahead and drop in the term. So now this is based upon what people are actually typing into Google. And whereas purchase intentions, they're also typing into Google, but it's a little more broad. Of course, Google's not going to tell us exactly how they come up with these. But in this particular instance, you can go ahead and have those based on terms. And then of course, we could also go ahead and put in the URLs of the sites as well. So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And again, we only want to have one option in this column, especially with YouTube ads, because the, the way the reporting works, if we have more than one, we're not actually going to know which audience is working. So we'll go ahead and skip ad creation for now, and we will come all the way down here to our bid. So our bid is going to be 10 cents again. We'll go ahead and save ad group. No, skip, skip. 
save ad group, skippable in stream, and now we can go ahead and save the format. So here we have our two ad groups and they're both targeting a list of landing page softwares that our ideal customers are most likely using. And then of course you can go through this process over again, trying out influencers and groups of keywords as well. So we could have up to six different ad groups here. Obviously for time purposes, we'll just go ahead and leave it at these two. So now it's time to put together our ad. So jumping back into our diagram, we've already created our campaign. We've set up our ad groups telling Google who we want our ads to show to. And now it's time to create our actual ads. Now, when it comes to ad creation, check out the link in the description to our YouTube ads playbook that goes through this simple 90 second script to hook your ideal viewers in, repel those who aren't a good fit, and of course, drive those viewers who are a good fit over to your site. Now we're going to be use some, using something called skippable in-stream ads, as you saw when we were setting up our, our settings. And these are the videos that show up in front of other YouTube videos and people have five seconds before they can actually skip. And so what's really important with whatever you do with these is in the first five seconds, you want to call out specifically who your ad is for and then alienate everybody else. Again, the script you're looking at here is going to be really helpful in coming up with what to actually say. So make sure you check out that link in the description to grab that. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and set up our ads. So jumping back into our interface here, we're going to go ahead and click on our first ad group here, custom intent. And now we're under ads and we can go ahead and click the blue plus button, make our ad. So I've already have an ad uploaded here and I upload our ads as unlisted so that they don't show up in people's uh, feeds here. So I'll go ahead and drop that in. And of course I talk way too much. So uh, we do find that this is true. Like three minutes is, is, is a good number to, to have, especially since people can see how long the ad is. So if you have like a 10 minute ad, someone's immediately gonna look at that and go, well, yeah, no, I'm not gonna stick around for 10 minutes and skip. So then we're gonna need our final URL. So this is the landing page for the webinar that we're going to be sending traffic to. So I'll go ahead and copy that URL. I'll jump back over to Google Ads. I'll drop that in. Then of course, for our display URL, we want it to just be our main domain. Now you'll notice here that this says blueprint.actmarketing.io. But if yours is something like reports or blueprint.systemi, lead pages, click funnels, Kajabi, uh, Kartra, whatever you're using, then you can't actually use your own custom domain. You'd have to put the domain of the software that you're using. So that's why it's really important to actually set up a domain with whatever service that you're using. So that way you can put your actual company domain as opposed to the software that you're using. So for the call to action, this is going to be the blue button that shows up below the video. So we could say something like watch now since it's a webinar. And then for our headline, we only have 15 characters. So there's not a whole lot we could do. So I'm just gonna put Google ads here. We could probably be more creative, but here's a little preview of what it will look like on desktop and then mobile. Now on TV screen, we don't wanna do this because you can see it uses the send to phone. So that's why we uncheck TV screens because guess what? If normal people don't have their phones connected to their, uh, their smart TVs or whatever they're using. As an example, I like to use Apple TV to watch YouTube, but I have an Android device. You better believe they do not talk to each other. So every time an ad like this shows up, even if I wanted to send it to my phone, I can't because I, I don't have the two talking to each other. So anyway, <laughs> it's probably spent way too long on that. We'll go ahead and jump back to the mobile preview so my face isn't so big. And then we can go ahead and just give our ad a name. And you can upload a custom companion banner. And so if we come back to the desktop preview, that's what will show up here. And so that's something that you can make in five or 10 minutes over on Canva and you can upload it and there's no penalty to creating custom ones. So we'll go ahead and click on save our ad here. And then what we'd want to do is upload two or three more ads. And so what I like to do, especially with this one, this is version one of, I think we did 17 that day. And as you can see from this little screenshot from our editing, we only changed the first five to 15 seconds. And then the rest of the ad is the same. And so this is how you can really start to split test 
what ads are working and what ads aren't because it's that first 15 seconds that's really gonna make the biggest difference. And after that, all the ads are the same. I literally have seven, 17 ads where we only change the first 15, 15 30-ish seconds. You can tell that I talk a lot <laughs> and I don't stay on script. And then after that, the ad is the same. So again, link in the description to our YouTube ads playbook that has a simple script that you can follow for your own ads. So now what we need to do, let's go ahead and say that we've created a couple more. All we need to do is copy this over to our other ad group and we're all good to go, except for the content exclusions. So we'll go ahead and select this. Then we can come down here to edit. We can go ahead and click on copy. Now up here at the top gray bar, I'm going to click out to our entire campaign here and I'm going to click on ad groups so I can get back to our main ad groups dashboard, this is not a dashboard, main ad groups list. And then we just set up the ad inside of custom intent landing pages. So now we need to add it to custom terms landing page software. And because I'm OCD, I'm gonna fix this. There we go, now everything's right with the world. So we'll come down here to custom intent and then you'll see a paste button has appeared. So we'll go ahead and click on paste and then we can just click done and we'll click on paste. And then our ad has pasted into our other ad group. So if I click up here to our campaign that we've just set up, you'll see that we have our ad inside of custom terms landing page and custom intent landing page. So if we jump back up to our ad groups, of course our ad will start running the next Monday that I set it up for. And then after that, it's time for optimization and testing. Now there's one last step here because Google is making this a little more confusing for us. And that is that setting at the very beginning that we weren't able to set when it came to content exclusions. So I'm going to come up here to tools and settings and I'm going to come over to content suitability here. And this is something that will apply across your entire account. And so this is where you get to tell Google and YouTube essentially how strict do you want to be with the type of content you show up. Now, personally, I always put it on expanded inventory. This is YouTube after all, nothing terrible is making it through the cracks for the most part. And then I can come down to this excluded sensitive content and get really detailed on what I do or do not want to show up on. I do recommend checking live streams and embedded YouTube videos here. However, for everything else, I tend to leave it alone. And the reason that you want to do this is you want to maximize the places that you can show up because big brands, they're coming in here and they're checking limited inventory. They're coming in here and checking all of this because they are super scared of their brand equity or showing up on something that is going to, you know, hurt their, you know, billion dollar brand image. But for us as smaller advertisers and really as a direct response marketing, you really shouldn't care what your ideal viewers are watching, right? People are choosing to watch this content. It's not like we're forcing them to. So definitely do expanded inventory and leave everything else unchecked so that you can maximize your chances of showing up in front of your ideal customer and it will lower your ad costs because now you don't have to compete with the bigger players in your niche our industry who only want to show up on limited. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. And most importantly, you're a lot more confident when it comes to actually setting up your YouTube ads campaign. So make sure you check out that link in the description to our YouTube ads playbook for all of our latest campaign settings, how to actually go through a simple optimization process now that your ads are running. And of course, our YouTube ad script so you know what on earth to say to of course get people to jump over to your site and purchase your products or join your email list. So hit that like button, subscribe for more marketing guides just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.